Hello, this is Mr. Bean from flipmath.com and I am pumped to teach you some really cool stuff today and this thing I like to call the mental calendar in which you can calculate in your head the day of the week for any date in history. My favorite thing to do with this is use it as a party trick when I ask people their birthdays and then I can calculate in my head the day of the week they were born. It's quite impressive to do with your friends and something that's just really useful too when you're trying to plan things out for the year and you don't know what day of the week something is. Now I've got three parts of this video series. This video is part number one where we're going to talk about a history of the calendar, give you a little bit of background. It's really kind of cool information. It is not necessary to understand the history of the calendar in order to do parts two and part three. So if you want to just jump straight to part two to learn the calculations, you can look at the video description and click the link there to follow that lesson. But again, this one's kind of cool. I'm going to try and do this quickly and it gives you a little bit of background of why what we're going to do works for the days that it does work. So let's begin. We have the cycle of seasons, spring, summer, autumn, winter, spring, summer, autumn, winter, and it goes in this cycle over and over again. This is known as what's called the tropical year, and the tropical year can be measured very precisely. It is 365.24218966988 days long. That, in other words, the tropical year is how long it takes the Earth to revolve around the sun. And for thousands of years, humans have tried to figure out a way to measure the passing of time and the passing of these seasons. This is especially important for farmers Farmers need to know when to plant crops. And if you have the entire community planting crops at the wrong time of the year, and they all die, the crops I mean, not the people, you need to plant them at a very specific time of the year and calendars help you figure that out. So all over the world, we have different cultures and different countries using various methods. But there was one in particular that stuck around in Western culture. We'll talk about that one in just a second. My question for you is, how often do we have leap years? That February 29th day, that leap day, how often does that happen? Most of you are gonna say once every four years. Unfortunately, that's wrong. And some of you are like, what? Mr. Bean, that is not wrong. We have it every four years. I know this, I've, we've had one every four years my whole life. Yeah, but let me get to the, an explanation of this. I'll explain in a minute how often we actually have leap years. Once every four years for a leap year is actually the Julian calendar. It was named after Julius Caesar, and back in 46 BC, he proposed a new calendar system. So his astronomers and mathematicians, they got hard to work to come up with a good calendar that would work out for them. Now to understand something about the Roman months, now they had different names back then, it might not have been called March, April, May, and so forth, but something really interesting about these months, they just had 10 months at first, this is before Julius Caesar. But notice these months over here on the right. Those months have an interesting beginning to them. Look at that, sept, oct, nove, dis. That makes sense, seven and sept, eight and oct, like an octopus. Well then eventually, they threw on two new months, January and February, we'll call them January and February, but they put them at the beginning of the year, and so that pushed these other dates back. So that's why sept, oct, nove, december, those months don't quite match up with the numbers that you think they would, because January and February messed us all up. And then what? Julius Caesar's astronomers came up with was let's put an extra day on February every fourth year. And they call it a leap year. So the Julian calendar is on average 365.25 days. Now look how close that is. The actual tropical year, 365.24, those are pretty close. It doesn't seem like it's that far off. In fact, it's 0 .0078 days each year is how much it's off by which again, doesn't seem by much. That's how many hours it's off each year, and that's how many minutes and seconds, 11 minutes, 15 seconds each year it's going to be off. It's going to take 128 years for this Julian calendar system to be off by one day from the tropical year. Now that may not seem like a problem, but eventually, if you keep letting this go over and over again, those in America, you'd be celebrating the 4th of July with barbecues in the snow because your calendar would not match the tropical seasons anymore. So after a lot of time goes by, now the calendar starts to get off and the Julian calendar is not working. So then we have Pope Gregory the 13th and we get the Gregorian calendar. This is the calendar we use today. And he, he proposed, well, okay, he proposed it with his smart people that worked for him, proposed in 1582, a new calendar system. They recognized that the spring equinox, which was supposed to be on March 21st, that's the day where the daylight and the nighttime are almost exactly the same amount of time. 
It's really, really close in amount of time. And they noticed that it wasn't happening anymore. March 21st was definitely not the spring equinox anymore. Well, that's a problem. I mean, not only are there religious things going on, but also it's going to make it difficult for planting crops. So what they did is they declared that on October 4th, 1582, that day was going to be followed by not October 5th, but October 15th. Yes, they skipped 10 days. If your birthday fell in between October 4th and October 15th, you lost your birthday that year. Sorry, man, no parties. They just reset the calendar and that got the calendar system back on track. Okay, that was the first step. Then the next thing is they want to make the calendar more accurate. So what they did is they said, leap years are going to be every four years, and this is what we do now, except century years. 1600, 1700, 1800, 1900, 2000, 2100. Unless, and this is where it's weird, unless the century year is divisible by 400. Okay, what? <laughs> That's confusing. All right, so let's follow this. Leap years happen every four years except century years, unless it's divisible by 400. So here's what we have. 1600 was a leap year because it's divisible by 400. 1700 was not a leap year. 1800 was not a leap year. 1900 was not a leap year. The year 2000 was a leap year. And this is why it's confusing. Because what we have is a whole bunch of people who were alive in the year 2000 who experienced a leap year. And they never knew anything different. So they just assumed leap years are every four years. But in actuality, that only happens once every 400 years, where you have a century year that is a leap year. Usually it's not. So if we lived back in the year 1900, we would have seen 1900 was not a leap year. So we, we went eight years from 1896 to 1904 before we had a leap year. And if anybody's still alive in 2100, I don't know why I will not be, then you'll know that one's not going to be a leap year. So here's our new Gregorian calendar. 365.2425 days on average. So for those of you who like to be the smartest person in the room, and the, you have a teacher who says, how many days are in a year? And a student raises their hand and says, 365 days. And then another student raises their hand, no, I'm smarter than you. There's 365.25 days. Well, you can be that really cool kid who then raises their hand and says, no, 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 I'm smarter than all of you. There's 365.2425 days. All right, that is actually the number of days on average in our current calendar system. Now look how close that is to the tropical year. A tropical year, 0.2421. We gotta go four decimal places out to this one right here before it's off from the Gregorian calendar system. That's pretty good. In fact, it's only off by 26.8 seconds per year. That's how far off it is. It's going to take 3,200 years before we even get off by one day, which is awesome because that means we don't have to make an adjustment to our calendar system for 48,000 years. So that's pretty good. Assuming we can avoid an alien invasion or some type of meteor that destroys us, then we're really good to go for a long time on our calendar system. So this mental trick to calculate the days of the week, it only works for October 15th, 1582 and on. You can't use this trick for any days before that. Hopefully this was informative for you. I know we didn't talk about any calculations or anything. We'll do that in videos two and videos three of this little series. If you found it informative and like this, please like and consider sharing this video with others. And this is Mr. Bean signing off. I hope to see you back in our next two videos.